So, we continue our discussion on the compound semiconductor materials and devices, which are uh, useful when you go to uh, nano scale particularly. So, what we said is we will take up take a look at uh, material properties, we have gone through that uh, in the last uh, lecture and today we will see some more details about that and the properties, the velocity field characteristics and FETs using that, what type of FETs are made popularly and then go on further. The, the entire reason for taking a look at non silicon materials is hidden or he is described in this particular slide. And you can see that on the y axis you have got the electron mobility. We are looking at materials which have got electron mobility is higher than that of silicon, which is the very popular material that is about 1500 centimeter square per volt second. And the band gap is 1.1 electron volts at room temperature. So, if we have to use or if you have to choose an alternate material which is superior to silicon, one of the things that we look at is the materials which have mobility above this horizontal line that is above 1500 uh, or so. So, there are a lot of materials that are like that. For example, indium antimonide, indium arsenide, gallium antimonide, germanium, gallium arsenide, India phosphate including gallium nitride recently. Now, it is not enough if the mobility is high, they should have also fairly decent uh, band gap, preferably higher than that of silicon or at least close to that of silicon. If you take a look at those materials which have band gap higher than that of silicon, you have got gallium nitride, but mobility not much higher compared to silicon ideal value. Indium phosphate and gallium uh, arsenide as we pointed out last time, we have got much higher mobilities for electrons compared to silicon at least 5 to 6 times that, that of silicon in gallium arsenide and at least 3 times than that of silicon in indium phosphate. Gallium antimonide has got higher electron mobility, but band gap is smaller than that of gallium arsenide. Germanium we saw already that it is a potential material uh, because of its high electron mobility as well as high hole mobility, but the drawback on the downside is that the band gap is lower, but due to when you do quantization confine make the thin layers devices on thin layers then that uh, mobility uh, band gap can be improved. So, now you can also see here as I already pointed out gallium arsenide has got higher mobility, indium arsenide has got even much higher to 20,000 centimeter square per volt second mobility. But, if I can combine gallium arsenide and indium gallium arsenide and indium arsenide make an alloy which is a ternary alloy, I can have the combined effect of these two that is higher mobility than gallium arsenide can be obtained, but band gaps better than that of indium arsenide can be obtained. So, one takes look at materials like indium gallium arsenide. Okay they are ternaries. So, you can see that when you go into compound semiconductors, you have got variety of choices in terms of binaries, ternaries, quaternaries. Quaternaries you have four elements, okay, gallium, indium, arsenic, phosphide or materials like that. So, the ternary we are just talking of a material like gallium, indium, arsenide, where you mix indium arsenide and gallium arsenide already pointed it out last time. You can see 1 x equal to 1 gives gallium molecule is 1 for gallium atom 1 gallium atom for 1 arsenic atom and x equal to 1 means indium atom is 0 that is gallium arsenide. So, x tells you the mole fraction of gallium in gallium indium arsenide usually stoichiometric gallium arsenide will have x uh, 1 gallium atom will have 1 arsenic atom, but if you replace gallium with the indium atoms. For example, if I replace for 2 arsenic atoms 1 gallium atom and 1 indium atom 
that will be gallium 0.5, indium 0.5 and arsenic 1 get the gallium indium arsenic. That is just to understand the symbol. So, here I can have gallium indium arsenide which will give you anywhere the band gap between the two and mobility anywhere between the two both will be direct band gap semiconductors. Okay. Now, other ternary compound semiconductor which is popular is uh, aluminum gallium arsenide El gas x equal to 0 gives gallium 1 and arsenic 1 that is gallium arsenide x equal to 1 gives gallium equal to 1 minus x is 1 minus 1 0 and aluminum is 1 that is aluminum arsenide. You can change in fact the band gap of gallium arsenide by moving from by keeping on changing the uh, gallium concentration or in replacing gallium with aluminum atoms L gas or aluminum gallium arsenide. So, in fact, I had just begun with some of these uh, the discussions on this. So, what is happening is here is you can mix for example, I can have gallium arsenide and indium arsenide is here. I can mix them together to get gallium indium arsenide. I can have gallium arsenide grown on aluminum arsenide or grow aluminum arsenide on gallium arsenide. See when you want to make hetero structures that is, that is materials or devices based on two different materials like gallium arsenide and aluminum arsenide. You can do that provided you are able to grow one layer over the other without introducing defects. So, if you take a look at this chart which is very popular one the y axis gives you the band gap minimum band gap means the gap between the conduction bandage and the balance bandage. If you take gallium arsenide it is about 1.43 aluminum arsenide is 2.1 or so. Now, if you take the lattice constant germanium, gallium arsenide, aluminum arsenide all of them have about 5.65 uh, angstroms lattice constant. That means, you can grow gallium arsenide on germanium without having defects or the interface or minimum defects. You can grow aluminum arsenide on gallium arsenide or you see from gallium arsenide if you keep on adding aluminum in place of gallium you move in this direction and when x equal to uh, completely 1 it is aluminum arsenide. So, you can see this solid line indicates that it is direct band gap. The dotted line indicates that beyond that point if you add more aluminum it becomes indirect band gap aluminum gallium arsenide. So, nevertheless you can grow aluminum gallium arsenide on gallium arsenide. In fact, uh, there are heterostructures fabricated using L gas on gas, aluminum gallium arsenide on gallium arsenide. Okay. But very good lattice match. Similarly, you can grow gallium arsenide on germanium. This has been uh, one of the popular starting materials for gallium arsenide solar cells, because you can collect the entire solar spectrum with just about a couple of microns of gallium arsenide. Okay, but gallium arsenide if it is you, uh, you are using the full thick layer of gallium arsenide wafer it is very expensive. So, you can use a cheaper substrate like germanium on that you can grow gallium arsenide and make device p n junctions or uh, hetero type of junctions on gallium arsenide to make the solar cells. So, that is gallium arsenide based devices if I want to use indium phosphate based devices or gallium indium arsenide you can see gallium arsenide is here that is constant 5.65 indium arsenide is bigger lattice. So, it is about 6 point 6 point uh, 1 close to 6 point 1 angstroms that is constant. Now, if you mix them gallium arsenide and indium arsenide at a particular ratio you can get the lattice constant which is about 5.85 uh, 5 or so which would match with indium phosphide. You can grow therefore, gallium indium arsenide on indium phosphide. Indium phosphide. So, starting with indium phosphide substrate you can make layers of gallium indium arsenide with a very good lattice match. So, this is just I wanted to show you that if you want to make heterostructures you can have uh, gallium indium arsenide on indium phosphide 
or gallium arsenide uh, uh, on germanium or uh, L gas on gas, aluminum gallium arsenide on gallium arsenide. So, this is the very popular diagram which uh, people take a look at to, to see which one matches with which one. Okay. See, you can grow gallium phosphide if you want on silicon, very good lattice match 5.45 or so. You can grow that. Wider band gap material, okay. The if you take a look at the mobility, the mobility is uh, low in the case of gallium phosphide. So, you can use it only for some op optical applications like uh, LEDs, etcetera. Okay. You can mix them together also. Okay. Now, we take a look at the uh, velocity field characteristics of the different materials. The very popular material that you have in uh, uh, use in industry is silicon. Silicon we have discussed this velocity versus electric field. Okay. Increases linearly initially, then saturates scattering limited velocity 10 to the power of 7, 1 into 10 to the power of 7 centimeter per second. That is the velocity saturation velocity and mobility of electrons is best that you can get is about 1500 centimeter square per volt second. Now, if you take silicon carbide, which is also an alternate material, mobility is not very high about 700 centimeter square per volt second, but it is a wider band gap material can be used for high power high temperatures that has got velocity field characteristics like this. Notice the saturation velocity in this case is much higher compared to that of silicon, which would imply that you can use it for higher voltages, high fields, high breakdowns. So, power devices people tend to take a look at it say at silicon carbide, but it is a more difficult material to work with. So, the there are some restricted applications on that, but people are looking into that both for microelectronics as well as for micro electromechanical systems, because it is a much tougher material compared to uh, silicon. Now, they are both behaving almost identically. But if you take a look at this gallium arsenide, the velocity field characteristics are totally different because of the difference in the band structure of the gallium arsenide and uh, silicon. Silicon is a indirect band gap semiconductor, we have uh, discussed that. Gallium arsenide is a direct band gap semiconductor, we will discuss more details in the next few slides. So, because of this direct band gap uh, material property, the you will see soon that in the next slides, the gallium arsenide velocity field characteristics increases practically linearly at low fields. You can see it is much steeper compared to the silicon velocity field characteristics, indicating the mobility is high. In the low field region velocity is proportional to electric field linear, it is steep, mobility is high about 8500 centimeter square per volt second and the velocity keeps increasing, but after some electric field something happens which what we will discuss soon and the mode of transport of the electrons changes and the effective mass of electrons becomes higher as a result velocity falls <coughs> and it falls and ultimately falls down to the uh, almost equal to the saturation velocity of silicon. So, it goes up down, but most important thing to note is gallium arsenide has got very high mobility plus if you are operating in this region of electric field anywhere here you can see the velocities of carriers are can go as high as twice that of saturation velocity. So, one can visualize that you can have devices which have got which have got high velocities. So, that, that is what we are looking for high mobility high velocity. If you take a look at indium phosphide which is slightly lower band gap than that of gallium arsenide and slightly lower mobility it has got similar characteristics like that goes up down. Take a look at gallium arsenide which is again the direct band gap semiconductor mobility is lower than that of gallium arsenide lower than that of indium phosphide. 
So, its slope is slope smaller goes up peak field reaches at fields like 50 kilo volts per centimeter. That means, you can see that this can be used for very high uh, fields or high voltages. So, power device people more than nano device people power device people take a look at this gallium nitride as an alternate material for making high power devices high voltage devices a lot of work is going on on that. Okay. We can see the peak field peak uh, velocity is about 2.5 in 10 to the 7 mobility may be lower, but the peak field is high. All these have implications on the uh, carrier transport in these type of materials. Let us take a look at what why such a thing happens in gallium arsenide. If you take a look at gallium arsenide, okay. <coughs> We have said the velocity field characteristics is like this. Two, slightly more than two. Sometimes people quote the energy band diagram. If you look at the allowed states in the conduction band, the energy on the y-axis and x-axis. If you plot the momentum, that is E-K diagram. We call E-K diagram. Usually, usually when we plot the energy band diagram, we plot the energy band diagram by the dotted line that is the conduction bandage and this dotted line that is the valence bandage. So, we talk of transition between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band. Now, if you take look at gallium arsenide the energy versus momentum diagram follows this route. I will not go into more details of that there is too much of physics in there, but what we have to understand is these are the allowed energy conditions. Okay. This is the minimum energy position in the conduction band. These are the allowed states in the conduction band energy conditions. So, if the electron is here, the minimum in this conduction bandage coincides with the maximum in the valence bandage. That means, if an electron has to transit from conduction band edge here. See, if you take a look at this conduction band, if in thermal equilibrium all the electrons in the conduction band edge will be located around this minimum. Electrons tend to occupy the minimum energy position and the holes tend to occupy the maximum energy position because that is the minimum energy position for holes. Holes will be here, balance will be here. So, electrons all of them are located here thermal equilibrium condition which would mean if an electron transit from the conduction bandage here to the balance bandage that can happen just by losing that energy okay, and that difference in the energy can be absorbed by a particle like photon light. It can be emitted as light. Light because of its uh, large wavelength the uh, momentum is small. So, there is no momentum difference between the electron here and here. Therefore, the conservation of energy only is required. Supposing this if you talk of silicon it is not a direct band gap. Okay. It is a band it is a band gap is slightly different. For example, if I take a look at oh sorry if I take a look at the Okay. If you take a look at silicon, the conduction band, the valence bandage will be like that. Okay. The conduction bandage minimum will be somewhere here okay. and this point will be something like something like that. Okay. So, this will be conduction bandage, this will be valence bandage that is E C E V. Okay. So, you can see that this is a minimum of the conduction bandage position. If the electron has to transit from here to here, this is the energy and this is the momentum k. This transition will have to can be accommodated 
by a particle which can absorb the energy difference and also the momentum difference. The photon can or cannot do that, it has to take place through some uh, intermediate levels or the phonons. So, this transition is called indirect band gap transition or the material is called indirect band gap semiconductor. Okay. So, always this electrons will be remaining here and transition will be from here to here by with the help of phonons. Now, if you go back to the gallium arsenide or indium phosphide, okay, you will see the direct band gap. The transition can take place with the help of photons. Okay. So, that is the direct band gap material. Now, what we are trying to see is <coughs> what happens if I apply electric field to the gallium arsenide material. If I have a contact and if I apply electric field between the two, the energy of the electrons here goes up. Okay. So, between the two ohmic contacts when I apply voltage current will flow because with the velocity v decided by this curve. As you increase the electric field velocity will increase linearly initially and during all this portion all this electric field the energy of the electrons is much smaller than the energy required to move to this transit this point. The difference between this valley the central valley and the satellite valley is if the electron is here just we borrow the result the effective mass of the electrons here is small that is 0.067 times the rest mass of electrons the mass of electron in vacuum. Okay. So, the 0.067 effective mass times the mass of electron. If the electron is here the effective mass is much higher than that. Okay. So, so long as the electron is remains in this particular region which will happen till it goes on acquiring energy from the electric field the electron will remain in this region. So, it will go with the velocity decided by the small effective mass. Effective mass small means the mobility is higher. If you remember we have derived it earlier shown that the mobility is inversely proportional to the effective mass. Mass is smaller, mobility is higher, so velocity is higher. But once it goes higher and higher velocity, the energy of the electrons is goes up so high that it finds it can get scattered to this level. If the energy is comparable to that goes by about 0 0.31 electron volts, it can just move from here to here. It can get transition can go from this valley to this valley. So, if the electron moves from here to here, see it has gone to this particular position, a electric field equal to about in this case for gallium arsenide 3 kilo volts. Up to that point, if you go, the electron energy is or velocity is sufficient or the energy is sufficient for the transition to take place from here to here. So, once it moves into that point with that energy there, suddenly it finds itself to be heavy. Okay. Half m v squared is energy here, half m 1 v squared, but if it, when it is got transferred here, it is half m 2 v squared, m 2 is larger than m 1. So, velocity starts falling immediately. So, it is not as if all the electrons will get transferred immediately it will begin transition from here. So, many of the electrons will start moving from here to here as you go to higher and higher electric field. So, what is plotted here is I am not showing the calculation ratio of electrons n 2 here divided by total number of electrons n 1 plus n 2. So, if n is a total number n 2 divided by n that is n 1 plus n 2 is what is plotted here. For example, here it is n 2 is equal to 0, but at that point good fraction of electrons have started transporting onto the satellite valley. As a result number of electrons in the satellite valley goes up, number of electrons which have uh, higher effective mass goes up. So, number of electrons which have got lower velocity goes up. So, the average velocity begins to fall. It begins to fall ultimately it approaches this 1 into 10 to the power of 7. Okay. So, you have got these region so called the negative differential mobility region is obtained here. Okay. So, you have got transition from this central valley to the satellite valley which results in the reduction in the velocity, but notice in between the region you have got the velocity much higher than this 10 to the power of 7. Okay. 
So, please remember that there is a region where you can get very high velocity. Suppose you have the electron here, this is actually what we are plotting is the steady state velocity gradually increase the electric field. So, that give you time enough for them electrons to acquire thermal equilibrium and transfer on to that. But suppose you have electrons just near that source inject straight away into the channel where there is very high field. The electron just gets injected into this region it finds itself in the very high field region. So, if it is very high field region ideally if it is very high field region velocity field characteristics here supposing it is field is here, it will straight away find itself into launched onto that high field. So, it will just keep to go into that um, velocity uh, so long as it is in this region. So, in the steady state by the time it has acquired gone to this region, it has begun transfer transition to this, but if it is transition suddenly when you apply for the transition to take place from here to here, it does not take place immediately it takes a finite time. So, for a finite time it experiences that high electric field with that high mobility. So, velocity can shoot up here much higher than even this velocity so long as it remains here that is what is known as velocity over shoot effect in the transient conditions that we will see subsequently. Now, let us see how it will happen in the case of indium phosphide. Indium phosphide has got similar structure except the band gap is instead of 1.43 it is 1.35 and this difference in this energy instead of 0.31 is 0.53. That means, if I keep on applying the electric field for the electrons to move from here to here I must go to higher electric field. So, the transition from this central valley to the upper valley will take place at higher fields here. Supposing for example, here the transition begins at 3 kV because it is enough if it acquires 0 0.31 electron volt energy. But if this gap is 0 0.51, the transition will take place at a much higher electric field. That is what you see here. See, for example, Galen mass night the velocity field characteristic is in this fashion, the transition from the lower valley to upper valley takes place at 3 kV per centimeter. Okay. Indium phosphide the mobility is low, the slope is smaller and it takes more electric field, it requires more electric field to acquire enough energy to transfer from here to here. Therefore, it remains in the lower valley for longer extent of uh, electric field and by that time it goes to much higher electric field. See it has to go to much higher electric field to go to transition to the next region because see compared to this case 0 0.31 electron volt energy this case 0 0.53 electron volt energy. So, it requires more energy to transfer from the lower valley to upper valley. So, you go to higher electric field and higher velocities are required. So, you can see that the peak velocity in the indiposphite is much higher than that of Gallium arsenide. Okay. Silicon you can see that is hardly seen, you do not have that transient, uh, you do not have that over, uh, peaking of the velocity field. Now, let us take a look at the transient condition, uh, I am sorry, just I will just go into the transient condition, come back to this after of the transient condition uh, right away problem. Okay. I should have had this slide before, I will take on this first. Steady state electron velocity okay, and the transient velocity. What I have plotted here on the right hand side is the, let us take a look at Galen Arsenide. Since I just mentioned about the transient velocity, I will take a look at this slide itself. Steady state conditions drift velocity versus electric field silicon is like this y axis 1 into 10 to the power of 7 here. Galen mass night slightly more than 2 into 10 to the power of 7 centimeter per second it overshoot is there then comes down. Okay. Now, 
if I have the transient condition uh, which uh, I have just pointed out, supposing I have the electron in the lower valley that middle valley and if I apply voltage electric field suddenly for example, if I apply 1 kV suddenly transient steady state 1 kV velocity is almost close to 10 to the power of 7 here. Scattering limited is also 10 to the power of 7 I feel. So, if I apply 1 kV per centimeter it will go up to that point and remain there. It transitions from the uh, from sorry from this valley to that valley does not take place because the energy is not sufficient. Now, if I go to this particular uh, electric field for example, if I apply 10 kV per centimeter suddenly in the sense electron is cold in the source it is injected into the channel where the it sees very high fields because of the voltage applied to the drain region. If it were in steady state you can see that 10 kV per centimeter the velocity is here, but for the electron to see that 10 kV per uh, uh, to, to see uh, to go to the steady state value of uh, something like about close to 10 to the power 7 centimeter per second, it cannot go suddenly to that upper valley. Before it goes to the upper valley, it remains in the lower valley experiencing the velocity the electric field of 10 kV per centimeter. Okay. So, whatever mobility is there that is actually the mobility decided by the lower central valley where the effective mass is low. So, mobility say 8000 into that electric field 10 kV it will shoot up to that high value. So, and it will acquire energy and it will go much more than what it will go in the steady state and shoot up and by the time it has shoot up it has acquired you can see it has acquired it will acquire velocities even much more than that peak velocity of 2, 2 into 10 to the power 7 it will go even 5 into 10 to the power of 7 centimeter per second. These are actually simulation results using Monte Carlo simulation okay, which has been reported way back in 1977. So, it will go to that higher velocity overshoot will be there over and above the steady state velocity. Once it goes to that velocity it has acquired sufficient energy to get scattered to the upper valley where the uh, effective mass is lower. So, once it gets scattered to the upper valley its velocity falls down. So, you can see that for a short period of time like about 10 to the power of minus 12 0 to 1 picosecond this is x axis time y axis velocity the during a short time when it has remained in the lower valley and when it was experiencing high fields there will be high velocity. <coughs> <coughs> okay. But once it has acquired that high velocity <coughs> its energy has gone sufficiently large that it has gone to the upper valley where the mass is higher. So, velocity first starts falling. So, you can see in 1 microsecond uh, 1 picosecond during that 0 and 1 picosecond if there is high field in the channel the, the electrons can attain high fields. In a sense if you make short channel devices Okay, you have a chance that the electrons have got velocities even higher than the saturation velocity. Let us see what is the distance travelled during this time of 10 or 1 picosecond. So, what we have to do is I can plot velocity versus distance along the channel. What do I do? Multiply velocity versus time and plot it like this. <coughs> so, you can see for Galea Mars night, this is the same graph I have shown here velocity versus time and you multiply velocity versus uh, velocity into time and plot it as velocity into distance you can get velocity versus distance plot will be like this that phi by the time it has reached the peak it has gone beyond uh, about 0.2 micrometers. So, you remember the scattering distance within 0.5 micrometers exist in the case of Gallimard's night you can see if the channel length is 0.5 micron when the electron has moved from 0 to the 0.5 micron its average the velocity has gone through 2, 3, 4, 5 into 10 to the power 7 centimeter per second 
and it falls. Average velocity is much larger than the uh, saturation velocity of electrons here. Similar effects are seen in the indium phosphate. In fact, you see even slightly better. Okay. So, what we are telling from here is you can get you making use of this velocity overshoot effects. You can go to ch channel length which are 0 0.3, 0 0.2 microns length and acquire high velocities. Therefore, very short transit times can be acquired and you can get much higher speeds. Okay. So, that is what I just wanted to point out here. In fact, I have skipped a few slides. I will go back to those slides uh, after this. So, here so velocity overshoot occurs when the carrier velocity in, in transient conditions exceeds steady state drift velocity. Okay. That is steady state is uh, something much more than the steady state velocity here. Steady state velocity for that uh, region is much smaller, but it is much higher than that. Velocity overshoot does not occur when the electrons are confined to the central valley. For example, if the electric field is 1 kV per centimeter, okay, 1 kV per centimeter, the electrons do not have the energy to go to the upper valley. So, they are right through their confined to the lower valley, you do not see the velocity overshoot effect. Okay. The velocity overshoot in gallium arsenide and in a phosphate occurs if the carriers get transferred to the upper valley, where the electron mobility is lower. Okay. So, velocity overshoot effects and high electron mobility, these are the ones which encourage people to take a look at more and more into gallium arsenide and short channel devices and that lead to superior performance due to higher mobility. But one will actually see that quantization effects may ultimately upset the advantage of gallium arsenide as we discuss next. Okay. What is this quantization effect? See, gallium arsenide, the, the main advantage is the mobility of electrons is high the low field mobility is high and because of that you are able to get the uh, direct band gap effect and because of that you are able to get the velocity overshoot effects etcetera. Now, if I use very thin layer of material as we have seen in the SOI the due to the quantum confinement effect the band gap increases. Okay. In the case of silicon, it is a indirect band gap material, in the case of germanium, it is a indirect band gap material and the band gap goes on increasing. This can be used as advantage in the case of germanium, because higher band gap, it enables you to overcome the poor performance due to the lower band gap in germanium. In gallium arsenide, you have the direct band gap. Okay. Now, if I make thinner layer of gallium arsenide surrounded by wider band gap materials, you will have con quantum confinement effects and this affects the relative occupation of carriers in these valleys. For example, if you recall the, uh, the, uh, the quantum effects, uh, quantum well, potential well problem, the energy level would split the distance between the energy levels will be increasing if the width of the quantum well is reduced. Thinner the quantum well, more will be the distance within the, between the energy gaps. So, if I have a particular energy gap material E 1 E g, the energy gap will keep on increasing. And the how much is the splitting of the energy level depends upon how much is the thickness of the material. Thinner the material, more is the splitting. It also depends upon the mobility, uh, mobility or the effective mass, the mass m. Smaller the mass, more will be the splitting. Now, take a look at these two, uh, these two, these two, uh, you know, valleys, central valley of gallium arsenide and the satellite valley. Here the effective mass is smaller. So, when the confinement effect comes in, 
this energy levels here will move faster and faster with the electric field and increase the I am not electric field when you reduce the thickness okay, the energy level splitting will become more and more much faster here compared to here because here the effective mass is 0 0.55 times m naught here it is 0 0.067. So, the this you can actually visualize the situation where this gap this gap keeps on increasing much faster than this gap. So, what we, one can imagine a situation where you will have where you will have okay. see for example, right now I have the energy band diagram like that that is the satellite valley this is the uh, I am sorry that is the satellite valley. So, the electrons are here. Now, the energy levels here itself will split what will have happen will be this band gap which is actually the band gap of gallium arsenide direct band gap that will increase much faster okay, and it will move in that direction and you will have it I exaggerate it and show it like this it will move to that because of the smaller effective mass the split will be more. Okay. What was direct band gap here can become indirect band gap it will remain direct band gap if this also moves same way, but the effective mass here is smaller m naught into 0.55 here it is 0 0.067 times m naught this also will move, but this will move somewhere here like this. What will happen now? This has moved here. So, the, this is the direct band gap from there to here and the actual band gap will be from here to this point because that is smaller compared to that. So, what happens is what I am trying to point out is this particular whatever was direct band gap that band gap increases much more than whatever was this 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 wide uh, indirect band gap. So, if I in effect what would happen will be this goes off okay, and you will end up with this the transition is between this and this because this is the E c and this is the E v. Initially it was E c was here and E v was here E v 1 this is E v 2 and E v 2. Due to quantization E c 1 has become E c 2 E v 1 has become E v 2 and that E g whatever was there has become this one. Whatever was direct the material is no longer direct band, band gap material it becomes indirect. You may ask so, so what if it is indirect band gap it will be uh, harm it will not be useful for opto, opto, optical, opto, opto electron applications, but you see what you have done electron has high mobility here because of the sharp nature of the E k diagram whereas, the electron here has got uh, lower mobility higher effective mass. So, the electrons when it remains here the mobility of the electrons is smaller. So, whatever effect impact you had on gallium arsenide when it was direct band gap high electron mobility all that is lost all velocity overshoot effect high velocities all will be lost when you go to quantization. So, the moral of the story is when you go to very thin layer of gallium arsenide you may lose when you go to thicknesses like 2 or 3 nanometer thickness of uh, gallium arsenide you will encounter this effect, but still if you are using say 10 nanometer 15 nanometer you will still have the benefit of gallium arsenide. So, you can still use with the advantage for those thicknesses you can still use gallium arsenide for uh, nano scale devices. Okay. So, that is what I was trying to point out here. So, it is not all that uh, dangerous, 
but you have to worry about that effect the direct becoming indirect when you go to thickness of below about 4 nanometers. Okay. So, gallium arsenide is an excellent material. Okay. I will come back to these uh, discussions uh, later. Uh, it is excellent material with high electron mobility and all that we have discussed now, but they also we have seen they lose the advantage when used in thin films of thickness below 4 nanometer due to quantization effect. Now, let me go back to that slides which I skipped, where what type of devices can you make with gallium arsenide. Okay. So, what we have seen is gallium arsenide has got high electron mobility and it has got chances of having velocity uh, overshoot effects, velocities in excess of uh, saturation velocity okay. and we have seen that saturation velocity effects come into picture when you go to short channel effects. That means, when you go to short channel effects you can make use of the velocity overshoot effects. In fact, they have made channel device channels which are shorter say of the order of 0.5 micrometers or even smaller than that. Seen that the effective velocities as high as 2 into 10 to the power of 7 can be seen with gallium arsenide based devices. <coughs> now, one of the very popular devices which are used for gallium arsenide is the MOSFET. Now, why not MOSFET? You can use MOSFET that is you can use metal oxide then gallium arsenide layer. Okay. But, the interface state density in gallium arsenide is very high. The problem that we have with the germanium which we have explained ha was seen in gallium arsenide as early as in 1980s. People have spent lot of effort, have lot of research uh, effort has been put in in gallium arsenide for surface passivation. So, that you can deposit a dielectric and make a MOSFETs, okay. but not with great success, with some success. I will tell you that aspect after we discuss this particular device that is a MOSFET. Since initially there was not much success with this MOSFET, the alternate device that they thought is suitable is make a MOSFET. Take n type gallium arsenide we make devices on n channel devices using n type gallium arsenide. Okay. So, what is done is just like what you did in the SOI, you can have gallium arsenide layer on SOI, but if you grow gallium arsenide on an SOI that will be not be single crystal instead of SOI, what you do is whenever you want to use materials like gallium arsenide, indium phosphide or gallium nitride, you will use a high resistivity material at the substrate. See for example, in silicon technology we had silicon on sapphire SOS. Sapphire as is high resistivity material, single crystal very costly, you can grow silicon on that, take make devices on SOS alternate was SOI. In gallium arsenide, take semi insulating gallium arsenide. What is semi insulating? It is not insulating. Insulating material will have resistivity in the of the order of 10 to power 13 to 10 to power 14 ohm centimeters. Whereas, gallium arsenide band gap is 1.43, intrinsic carrier concentration is of the order of 10 to power 6 centimeter square uh, centimeter uh, 6 per centimeter cube. 10 to the power of 6 cent per centimeter cube, pairs per centimeter cube, whole electron pairs. Silicon, it is about 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube, gallium arsenide about 10 to the power 6. So, we can see about 4 orders of magnitude lower carrier concentration in intrinsic gallium arsenide. That would mean you can have about 4 orders of magnitude higher resistivity for gallium arsenide. So, undoped gallium arsenide pure gallium arsenide, intrinsic gallium arsenide, intrinsic pure that can show about 10 to the power of 
10 ohm centimeters close to about 10 to power 10 10 ohm centimeters. You do not call it as insulating, you call it as semi insulating gallium arsenide, SI gallium arsenide. You will see all these terms in compound semiconductors semi insulating gallium arsenide, semi insulating indium phosphide. So, take that material, grow gallium arsenide on that. Okay. Thickness of this layer you can choose. How to choose that? We will see that depends upon just like the soil layer, what would be the threshold voltage that you require? That will be the criterion for choosing that. What is the channel length that you want to choose? See, for example, if I want to sort the channel length in SOI, you have to use thinner layers. Similarly, if I want to sort the channel length more and more effective to avoid short channel effects, you must go to thinner and thinner <coughs> layers of uh, active layer. So, the device that we talk of here is not MOSFET, it is metal semiconductor contact. Okay. How would this work out? This has a rectifying contact at the center. I have not I put this contact away. It, it, in ideally, it should be as close to this contact as possible. Like in the case of MOSFET, this will be n plus region when very close contact to the gate region you are able to isolate it because of the oxide layer. Now, I have shown this electrically separated, but as close as possible to this gate metal. I cannot keep it very close to this self aligned with respect to that, because then there will be sorting between the source and the gate or between the drain and the gate. Okay. Okay. So, you can see these two contacts are the ohmic contacts. So, you have a n type semiconductor to which you have made ohmic contacts at the edges. Okay. So, if I do not have anything here contact this electrode is if it is absent what you will get will be take a bar of semiconductor make contact to the edges of that apply voltage it is like a resistor you will get a IV characteristics for the uh, like that of a resistor when the fields are small. When you go to high fields because of velocity saturates, current also will saturates. So, you get a characteristic similar to the transistor there. Now, here that is of no use for us. So, what you do here is you get put a gate metal here by which you can control the depletion layer below this, below this region. You know that a metal semiconductor contact, if it is rectifying contact, there is a depletion layer below that. Okay. So, I put, let us go to the next diagram gate material forms rectifying contact with the n region, ohmic contact through as source and drain regions, because this can directly supply the electrons to this channel. Okay. Now, let us see what happens here if I have a gate here, metal semiconductor contact. What I have drawn here is the depleted region. Initially, first let us talk of the case where I do not apply any voltage to the drain just apply the gate voltage with respect to the source. It is as good is the ohmic contact is as good as putting the contact below that somewhere. So, when I do not apply any voltage anywhere metal semiconductor contact if it is a rectifying contact there will be there will be a depletion layer below this metal and what I have put here plus is the depleted donors depleted of the electrons plus here represents a donor atom which has which is depleted of its electrons. Okay. So, this is the depletion layer edge that I have plotted. So, <coughs> due to the built in voltage V B I we have seen when we discuss short key barrier device we have seen that there will be depletion layer edge. How much is the depletion layer edge uh, width edge depends upon what is the built in voltage what is the built in voltage depends upon the doping level and the and the barrier height phi b n this is also we have seen i'm just recap uh, recalling your memory okay so here if you just go back to the some analysis uh, supposing i have built in potential v b i if i instead of a i'll call it as h if i have v b i 
I replace A by H. So, V B I will be equal to Q and D and D is the doping concentration into H squared by twice epsilon r epsilon 0. So, the built in potential which is de decided by the work function difference of this metal and semiconductor or the barrier height as well as the doping concentration mostly by the uh, phi m s okay, or the barrier height this built in potential decides what is the deflation layer with these. Now, you can see if I have a depleted layer here what has happened is the channel thickness is reduced by this quantity. I can draw that in a separate diagram. Okay. See, if you take a bar of semiconductor just to get some clarity on that, if I take a bar of semiconductor, that is the ohmic contact. In the picture there, I have shown the contact on the top, equivalently I have a voltage applied here V d s. Now, if this is n type, if there is no metal, the full height A is available for conduction. Okay. So, the current flow will be when I apply V d, I can take this as V d by R s R total resistance. This will go like this. Okay. That is the bar going like this, this is the contact here. So, the entire region is available for current flow. Now, if I put a metal on the top of that, what happens is I can draw the diagram here. Okay. I just draw it right here. That is the metal. Okay. Now, underneath that part of that will be depleted because of the uh, because this acts as a rectifying contact. So, let us see that how that will be there will be depletion layer below this. This is a two dimensional effect normally when we plot the plot this we plot only this portion. Okay. So, just let me remove that. I have to put that. Okay. So, I will have the depletion layer. Okay. You will have the depletion layer like this. Okay. So, this much width is now not available for, for current flow. So, if this is A and if this is H what is available for current flow is only this portion that is A minus H. So, the effective area for cross section is reduced now. So, that means, by using this gate I can control the thickness of this channel which is available for current flow. I can apply a reverse bias to this gate and the depletion layer width will widen and this A minus H what is available will reduce. So, I can control the current flow to this train and the source by change gate apply the voltage to the gate. So, I will discuss this more details about that in my next presentation how this actually works like a transistor. So, what you have to see is by applying the voltage I control the area of this channel.